Welcome to the first training video in our series of basic techniques. In this video, we will review the process of fine needle aspiration of the peripheral lymph node. Fine needle aspiration is a diagnostic procedure commonly performed to evaluate lymph nodes or peripheral masses. It is used to obtain cells for microscopic evaluation that can then be assessed for evidence of infection or cancer. This is a slide of cells obtained by fine needle aspiration that is diagnostic for lymphoma. These are large lymphoma cancer cells, and this is a normal white blood cell and normal red blood cells here. Compared to traditional biopsy techniques, fine needle aspiration is safer because it involves just installation of a small needle, it is much less invasive, and it is less expensive. The one downside is that sometimes you can miss subtle disease. We're going to be teaching you how to aspirate the popliteal and prescapular lymph nodes of the dog. The popliteal lymph node is located here behind the dog's knee. The prescapular lymph node is located right in front of the humerus or top arm bone of the dog and it is going to be located right here when looking forward at the dog. There are nine steps to successfully performing fine needle aspiration. The first step is to ask the handler to restrain the animal in either a standing position or in lateral recumbency, which means on the dog's side. You will then choose an appropriately sized needle and syringe for the sample you are going to be aspirating. Break the seal on the syringe and fill it with air, and then set both the needle and syringe aside. You will need to palpate and immobilize the node with the non-dominant hand. Palpation refers to feeling for the structure. The node should feel like a small grape or pea. While holding the needle between the thumb and index finger of the dominant hand, a little bit like you might hold a dart, you will insert the needle through the skin until it is well seated in, but not going all the way through the lymph node. The needle should be redirected in several directions within the node without coming back out the skin before being removed. This will allow you to obtain a good quality sample. After removal of the needle from the patient, it is attached to the air-filled syringe and then the needle tip should be held close over the end of a clean glass microscope slide. You will depress the syringe plunger very quickly while holding the needle hub to release contents on the glass side. And finally, you'll want to spread the contents from aspiration by laying a second slide gently on top of the aspirated material and then pulling it quickly across the bottom one. We are now going to go through each of these steps individually. Step 1. Ask the handler to restrain the dog in a standing position or in lateral recumbency. The dog in this video was very, very ill, and so aspiration was performed in lateral recumbency. We can appreciate the student requesting that the technician restrain the dog fully. It's very important the appropriate technique be followed for restraint. Safety should always come first. The important steps of appropriate restraint of a dog in lateral recumbency include application of one arm across the neck of the dog, with the hand grasping the bottom leg. This is preventing the dog from being able to lift its head up backwards to bite someone and also preventing it from being able to pull its leg in in order to pop up into a standing position. The other arm is being used to gain a secure hold on the back legs to again help keep the dog from having a desire to scramble. And when in doubt, a muzzle should be applied. Step two. Choose an appropriately sized needle and syringe for the material to be aspirated, and then break the seal on the syringe and fill with air. Also, you will want to break the cap off of the tip of the needle to make it easier to access. Here we can see the student looking at different syringe sizes and then settling on a syringe that would be appropriate for the tissue to be aspirated, which in this case is lymph node. She is filling it with air and then putting it back into the case to keep the tip from getting contaminated. She is now looking at her different needle sizes to determine the best needle to use. And once she is happy, she's going to crack the cap on the needle so that it will be easier to get the needle out when she is near her patient. She is then going to take the tray with the needle, the syringe, and some microscope slides over near her patient. The student is now going to palpate and immobilize the node using her non-dominant hand. She is aspirating the lymph node on the back of the bottom leg, as we can see here. This is the popliteal on this dog's bottom right leg. And so she's feeling to find the node and taking her time. It is really important when palpating the node that you take your time and do a good job capturing it, because once you have it captured, then you're going to be in a better position to get a diagnostic sample. If you aren't really sure that you have the node, you should release and start over. Here we see the student reaching to try and get the needle. 
You can appreciate these needles can be very stubborn and hard to get out of the needle cap, so she is being very careful to hold it tightly with her thumb and finger to avoid it flying across the room when it comes out of the cap. She is now going to reposition it, so she's holding it a little bit more like a dart, and then she's going to carefully insert it through the skin in a perpendicular orientation into the lymph node. The next step is to redirect the needle in several different directions within the node and then remove it. This redirection is very important for making sure that we do not get a poor quality sample. It allows you to get cells from several locations within the node all in the same slide. After the needle has been removed from the patient, you want to attach it to the air-filled syringe. The needle tip should then be held close over the edge of a clean glass slide, and you can appreciate that while doing so, the student is using her other hand to secure the needle itself. She has one hand that is operating the syringe and syringe plunger, and is using the fingers of the other hand to make sure that the needle stays attached. Now, while holding that needle hub securely with her right hand, she's going to depress the syringe plunger very quickly with her left. And there we can see the expulsion of contents of the needle onto the glass slide. Finally, to complete the aspiration process, it is important to spread the contents to make sure that the slide is not too thick for the clinical pathologist to interpret. To do this, you're going to take a second glass slide that is clean, lay it over the top of the aspirated material, and then quickly pull the two slides apart. This results in two slides containing samples from the patient instead of one. That is all that is involved in aspirating a peripheral lymph node. Just to recap, there are nine steps. You want to have the handler restrain the animal, either in a standing position or on its side, choose an appropriately sized needle and syringe, break the seal on the syringe and fill it with air and set it aside, and break the cap off of the top of the needle. Palpate and immobilize the node with the non-dominant hand, and then holding the needle between the thumb and index finger of the dominant hand, insert it through the skin until it is well seated in, but not going all the way through the node. The needle should be redirected in several directions within the node to obtain a good sample before removal. After removal, the needle is attached to the air-filled syringe, and then the tip is placed close over the edge of a clean glass slide. While holding the needle in place, the syringe plunger is depressed quickly to expel the contents onto the slide. And finally, the contents are spread by gently laying a second microscope slide on top of the aspirated material and pulling the two slides apart. Now it's your turn.